Thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, today, we're going to be talking to you about making sense of mobile. And there are two key questions that we're going to address. First of all, we're going to look at why would you bother looking at anything other than online, which we're all so used to. And secondly, we're going to look at how you can embrace other channels, especially mobile, effectively. So with me today, uh, I am Julia Stentz, and I'm a Director of Telecoms at Uswitch. We also have um, Jill, who's Affiliate Marketing Manager at Debenhams, uh, Kevin, who is Director of Strategy at Affiliate Window, and Greg, who is Managing Director of Batch Crowd. <coughs> so I think um, as internet marketers, a lot of us can be very guilty of thinking as if the act, acting as if the world revolves around the internet. Every transaction happens online, and all customers can be reached through the web. But that's not the case. And if we think in that way, we can actually be excluding a massive opportunity. So I'm going to cycle through some reasons why people might not shop online here. And some of these might seem quite alien to you. I know that certainly, given the amount of things that I buy online, they seem quite alien to me. So some people might just simply not have the internet at home. That might seem like a crazy idea to us, but it is a, a, a lot, very much the case. Um, some people might have had a bad experience when they bought something online, and that might have put them off trying again. Some people might not like giving their credit card details online. Some, a lot of people are still unsure about the safety aspects. Or some people might prefer to shop while they're out and about on their mobile phone. Um, so we're, what we're going to try and do today is talk through how big this opportunity is and how adaptable affiliate marketing is to embracing some different channels. We're going to try and show you some real life examples and some in detail case studies. So why should we care? I mean, we all do pretty well out of online. Um, UK affiliate market is booming. There's been 50% growth in the last three years. And online spend is growing rapidly worldwide. For example, in the US, there's predicted to be 42% growth in the next three years. That's, that's a huge rate of growth, especially when you consider that traditional media spend is declining by billions of pounds. Things like um, magazines has de declined from 40 billion in 2000 to just 35 billion in 2010. Five billion pounds loss of budget is a huge amount. But the thing is that the numbers that are left over are still very significant. Zenith Optimedia uh, estimates that online advertising is only responsible for 15% of advertising budgets worldwide. So if we look at that leftover chunk, that comes to a massive $450 billion. That's a fairly large amount of money that we've got the potential to tap into. So embracing some of these different channels can start to give us access to some of those forms of money that maybe people wouldn't even have thought about spending online. If we have a look at uh, the slides here, this shows the top six highest and lowest percentages of broadband penetration per household across the EU. And this comes from the 2009 Office of National Statistics. We can probably expect it to have increased by a few percent now, but it's not going to be massively different. So the average internet penetration across the whole of Europe is just 58%. The highest amount of internet users is in Germany, where they've got 65 million. And the lowest amount is in the Vatican City State, where they've just got 93 users of the internet. Very low. Um, so th that leaves a huge amount of people that don't even have the internet. They're never going to be shopping online. They're never going to see the beautiful banner ads that you've made or the PPC campaigns that you've made. So um, let's have a look at uh, consumer confidence. So even if a household does have the internet at home, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be happy with actually physically buying something. Again, these figures are 2009 from Ofcom. 50% um, of people have concerns about even giving their address online. Uh, the confidence has probably increased over the last few years, and I know a lot of companies have been doing some really significant work to increase this. But when you get things like massive security scares at things like PlayStation, that's not going to help the situation. And it just means that people are going to be that little bit more reluctant to respond to online advertising. Um, a survey was conducted in 2009 where they asked people across uh, various different countries in Europe between the ages of 16 and 74 whether they'd purchased something online within the last 12 months. Um, again, we can probably expect that this has increased a couple of percentage in the last couple of years, but it's not going to be wildly different from where it is here. The UK, um, two thirds of people have purchased something online, so that's the highest. Um, perhaps a fairly obvious trend, but still quite interesting. You've got a lot of the colder companies, things like Scandinavia, etc., up towards the top, and then a lot of hotter countries that have a much lower uh, rate of buying online down the bottom there. Things like Lithuania, Bulgaria, Romania, under 10% of people have even bought something online. So that's a huge amount of users that online marketing can never reach. So let's try and make an estimate of uh, how many people will actually be buying something online across Europe. 
So the average EU country, 58% of people don't even have broadband. So let's take them away, straight away. Then you've got a further 10% who haven't made a purchase online. So let's deduct them too. That leaves you with just 32%. So that's less than a third of the population of Europe have actually bought something online. Um, and this is the average, and it does get a bit bigger when you start looking at countries that are more accustomed to online. So, for example, the UK, you're looking at about 66%. Germany, you're looking at about 56%. But there's still huge percentages left over there that you're not going to reach through online marketing channels. So how are we going to reach all of these people? How are we going to start using more channels and reaching out to these additional users? Let's have a look at the world beyond online. So some of the things that we're going to talk to you about today Things like telephone tracking, mobile purchasing, reaching people when they're out and about on their mobile phones. Multi-channel promotions, hitting people across various different disciplines at once so that you're not missing out on any of that audience. Offline voucher redemption, so that you can reach people that aren't going to be through those online channels that we're so used to dealing with. And we've got a really detailed case study from Devon and Zon that should bring some of this up to life. So I'm going to hand you over to Kevin now and he's going to talk in a little bit more detail around some of these trends. Thanks, Judith. So, um, hello everyone, my name's Kevin, I'm the Strategy Director at Brilliant Windows. So, all of the stats that I'm going to present to you today are from a performance marketing point of view, through traditional CPA advertising, um, through affiliate programs. So, um, just to kind of launch straight into an example about uh, multi-channel. So, I'm going to talk primarily about mobile, um, and I wanted to talk to you about how an affiliate, a traditional affiliate, an affiliate that's been um, established for a number of years now is actually embracing mobile and kind of acting more, I think, as a, as a, uh, as a multi-channel retailer. So, Quidco, for those of you who don't know who they are, they're a cashback site, the largest cashback site in the UK. They have about 1.2, 1.3 million members. And the concept is they offer cash um, as an incentive to consumers. So they'll take the marketing spend, they'll take the commission that you pay them, and they'll convert it into a, a, a cash reward for consumers. So until about 18 months ago, that's primarily, that's pretty much all they did. Uh, they were a pure cashback site. And then they decided, well, we know the market's changing, we want to embrace additional channels. So they moved to becoming more of um, aligning themselves with the voucher code market as well. So uh, they continue to offer cashback, they continue to offer advertisers the opportunity to feature codes on their site. Or if you can work the margin back effectively, they uh, would come to opportunities in order to do both. Where I think Quidco um, has become a really interesting proposition for advertisers that they work with is what they've done most recently. So they actually very recently launched an app, so you can go to your iPhone, you can download a free Quidco um, app. And around that, they offer the ability to uh, get cash back through your app, but they also offer you the ability to go in store. Um, and get cash simply for going in store. So um, Jill from Debenhams will be presenting in, in a little bit. I know that they've been trialing some stuff with them. A number of other, of other high street retailers have also been working with them to offer a cash incentive for going in store. I mean, obviously, the job of the retailer is then to ensure that they keep that customer in store and that they transact in store. So what this, I think, represents is a really, really fascinating opportunity for advertisers who want to embrace um, affiliates who are becoming multi-channel, um, affiliates that are giving multiple routes to market and it also starts to piece together that picture about offline online and how one can influence the other. So taking the mobile, um, the, the mobile element, I wanted to throw some stats out to you about what we're seeing as an affiliate network. So we, um, and this, although Digital Windows is, this is the holding company I work for, um, they have uh, two affiliate networks, Affiliate Window and Buyout. I'm only going to present the Affiliate Window stats here. Um, affiliate Window has around about 900 clients, so this is looking at our range of clients, and we generated around about three quarters of a billion pounds worth of sales uh, for our clients last year. Um, we're seeing about 4% of our sales overall, regardless of whether an advertiser has a mobile enabled site, a mobile optimized site, we're seeing about 4% of our sales coming through um, mobile devices. And by mobile devices, I mean any device that you could feasibly call a mobile device. So not just mobile handset, but iPad, tablets, etc. 
And um, the, most, <coughs> the most recent full month's worth of stats that we have is for May when we generated around about three and a half million pounds worth of sales for our uh, advertisers through those mobile devices. An interesting stat, and this is the only day that it has happened, is that on um, Christmas Day 2010, the, um, the iPad actually overtook the iPhone in terms of sales. Taking the iPad to the, looking at another iPad stat, we also know that um, it converts better. Interestingly, it used to convert a lot better than our network average stats, as well as other mobile devices. Kind of, you would expect that. Intuitively, it's more like a desktop experience. Um, that's actually dropping, um, and it's actually becoming a lot more aligned with general mobile stats. So, I suppose you could maybe look at maybe more widespread adoption of iPad by um, a demographic that is maybe um, less internet savvy. Um, but it's, it's an interesting stat that we're, that we're following. Um, and then finally, a, an additional trend, and I'll come on to touch on this in a second, is, is how affiliates are embracing technology and coming to us in order to work on a CPA uh, with new technology that can, um, that can uh, really tap into uh, to, to mobile uh, development. So just to evolve that 4% of sales that we're seeing, um, you can see the rapid growth here, give it, give it a bit more context. If we go back to December, which is the far left stack, you can see the huge rapid rise in sales that we're seeing coming through, um, through mobile devices. Another interesting stat, the Apple share of mobile is actually declining. Whilst the sales are still increasing, rapid growth, which is, you know, refers back to the last slide, it's really interesting that if we look at the percent of sales that are coming through iPhone and iPad, it's actually decreased in the last six months from 83% to 73%. So to give that a little bit more context, um, apologies if you can't see this in any, in any great clarity, I'm quite happy to share any of these stats if you want to drop me an email. Um, if we go back to December, the BlackBerry and Android devices accounted for 12% of sales. Scroll forward through to May and it actually goes up to 22% of sales. So that's a fairly sizable chunk of, of revenue that's now coming through the devices which I think historically people haven't necessarily focused on. Um, it's becoming a more diverse uh, picture um, and presenting us with more challenges and opportunities, I guess. Now, one thing that we're really pushing as a network is if advertisers have a mobile-enabled site to put affiliate tracking on it, if you don't put the affiliate tracking on the platform, it's not going to track. Um, all of the sales that I've talked about coming through mobile devices, the vast majority of advertisers don't have e-commerce sites, they don't have e-commerce platforms. So it's kind of people are transacting regardless um, of how good the experience is. Um, they're just getting through and they're transacting regardless of how, um, how clunky the sites are appearing on, on mobile um, handsets. Now, these sales that we're seeing for one of our clients, The Hut, um, they put the tracking in place for their mobile uh, site in, um, in August. And it rapidly grew to 7%. And it's actually fluctuated a bit, and I'm surprised that it hasn't been a little bit higher than that. But one caveat, this doesn't take account of, um, uh, of iPad sales and potentially other tablet sales. And I think this is a, an interesting point to reference with any of the stats in the... Um, we will, um, depending on how the advertisers set uh, the um, referrer up, it will depend on whether um, we get sales recorded for, for an iPad, for example. So in this example, uh, when you go through to the hut and you go through on your iPad, it will, it will pull up the traditional desktop websites. This doesn't take account of um, tablet sales necessarily. So this is probably under uh, recording on what we would call mobile devices. So I've said it a couple of times, to say it again, for advertisers what we're really pushing is for them to have tracking on their own commerce platforms. I think where there's really, really interesting opportunities is around what publishers and affiliates are doing. So affiliates being companies like Quidco. Um, Nectar is an affiliate. They launched a mobile app recently and they came to us and they said, uh, we want to know all of the advertisers that have mobile enabled sites with tracking on it because we will give priority to those advertisers because we know that people, the experience is a lot better, people will transact, um, and the conversion rate is likely to be a lot higher. But where we've really started to see this ramp up, and um, Greg and Valtercard is a classic example of, of this, is when uh, publishers come along with technology, and um, 
Affiliate networks are a very easy place to come to gain access very quickly to lots of advertisers. The consequence of that is obviously you have to work on a, a, a payment on performance basis, a six CPA basis. So um, we're actually seeing the CPA channel, I think, as quite an interesting place for new technologies embracing mobile. So I wanted to just throw out a couple of examples. Um, so Amy for Later hasn't launched yet, launches in August. Whether it'll be a success or not, nobody knows, hasn't launched yet. Um, but it very much taps into the fact that people don't necessarily uh, want to uh, transact or in, in, in interact kind of in the here and now. It enables you to save an ad, um, talk into the app, uh, type into the app, say where you saw it, and then it will automatically do a file, it will automatically find that ad, serve up a deep, deep link to the product or the advert, um, and when you want to, you can go back and you can access that information. Perfect if, I guess, if you're on the tube and you don't have mobile, uh, you don't have internet access. Another example, which I suppose is, is just a, a, a classic sort of translation of um, a product or price comparison. Um, this is Scope, they run a, a product comparison on mobile devices, kind of really gain taps into how people interact with mobiles, they go into store, um, they do a product search, um, and this stuff is happening, kind of whether advertisers like it or, or they don't. Um, a lot of advertisers obviously probably quite cautious about approaching and working with companies like this, but it's there and it's out there. Um, and it's the challenge, I guess, that we face uh, for advertisers that have a big offline and, and high street presence. So with that in mind, I'm going to hand over to Jill, and Jill's going to talk about how they have started to really look at the offline online picture, um, and specifically a case study from Christmas last year. So for anyone who doesn't know me, um, I'm Jill Makepeace, I'm the marketing Affiliate Marketing Manager for Debenhams and uh, I'm going to present to you uh, a voucher trial case that we did um, last year. So um, in actual fact this has won us two awards recently as well, so it's a good example. Um, so I'm just going to run through uh, the background, the objectives of the campaign, how we planned it, what the actual promotion was, how we executed that and what the results were. So. Um, just to start off with the background, um, we generally run three voucher campaigns during the year um, and historically we've always used um, point of sale in store to hand these out and um, traditional marketing through uh, newspapers and television to, to push this out to all of our customers. So we wanted to um, subsidise this with new media, so using our affiliate campaigns, mobile, social media. So. The objectives were to have a full multi-channel um, coordinated campaign and make sure that we expanded that to, to every possible channel that we could really. We wanted to make sure that we gained granular reporting um, down to each channel and then down to individual customer level as well. Uh, we wanted to try and increase our footfall into stores and uh, traffic to online as well. Um, and obviously we wanted to try and reduce the reliance on offline advertising. Uh, additionally, to improve our performance in the future, we wanted to gain additional email and mobile data. And obviously leading to acquiring new customers, which we hope to retain in the future. And we've additionally, we've used um, unique codes to present the misuse and that also gave us the, the detailed level of reporting because we had an individual barcode for every single customer and we could track that back to um, each of the channels that we worked with. So the planning started about four months before the campaign, so roughly this time last year actually. And it involved many departments within Debenham, so we had marketing, um, PR, finance, uh, systems, online and creative. And then we worked with both of the affiliate networks that we work with uh, currently, so Affiliate Window and Affilinet. And they were targeted with finding the top publishers that we should work with um, for this campaign. So they were given a, um, a list of requirements that we needed, so we looked at the previous performance that we had from our um, affiliates and what kind of reach they have, what engagement their customers have had with our brand previously. Um, so we wanted to make sure that we had the best affiliates for the programme. And these are some of the ones that were selected. So the promotion ran um, from the 25th of October to the 12th of November last year. And we had slightly different offers um, for the different channels. So 
for in store and in national press we have five pounds off in store when you spend 25 pounds or more or a 15 percent off code for online um, for our affiliates email and sms and the iphone app we did roughly the same but we didn't enforce a minimum spend um, and the in-store offer was just £5 off when you spend £25, so that was just about given out to customers when they're in-store. And then we also ran um, a new offer with Voucher Cloud on their app, which was for 10% off in-store. So I'll just show you how we actually executed the, uh, the campaign through the different channels. So for Affiliate, um, we did a lot of planning with Affiliates to make sure that everything tracked perfectly to make sure that we could track exactly how well this worked so we could really get some good detailed reporting afterwards. So we selected the 10 affiliates and they would, however they decided to promote it um, on their site, it would either be with a text link, this example is a banner that we'd, uh, we created for someone. Um, and we made sure that everything throughout had exactly the same creative um, and we worked on building in dual branding as well. So once they clicked on the banner, they would land on a, a landing page, which is where we then gained the customer's data. Um, additionally, unfortunately, this screenshot, uh, screenshot doesn't show, but we had option to sign into not only our database, but the affiliates database. So we shared that data with them afterwards. Um, we dual branded this page. So once they've gotten the details, they would then get a thank you note that came up. Again, dual branded to make sure that we covered everything. Additionally, on this, um, and it doesn't show it again, sorry, um, we had the option to Facebook share so we could drive it virally as well. And then the customer would receive an email in their inbox. Now what we did for affiliates with this, we dynamically inserted um, all of the tracking. So every single link on this email then embedded the affiliate tracking to make sure that it was then um, tracked correctly and we could pay the affiliate for the sales that they drove. But obviously because we've driven them away from the site and given them an email, um, that affiliate tracking might not have happened. Um, if the customer had gone to another site in between. Um, and then the execution for Voucher Cloud. Um, so I think Greg will go into more detail in his presentation about how Voucher Cloud works. But um, if the customer is walking down Oxford Street, for example, and they want to know what offers are available, they'd see that Debenhams was close by um, and that they were running a 10% offer. Um, the customer would then get the option to uh, click on Redeem and um, Voucher Cloud's uh, technology enabled them to say that once they clicked through to redeem, it was a one use only code, so it wouldn't be gonna get misused after that. So they then get this, and then our staff in store would input that reason code, um, which would be exclusively for Voucher Cloud, and then we were able to track back that data um, to work out exactly how much they drove. Um, we also ran this with our mobile base, so we sent it out in a, an SMS to everyone that we've got in our base and we also do the push notification to our um, iPhone app uh, users as well. And then we ran the campaign through Facebook um, and utilised the share and the like functionality to drive it virally. And we also had a Twitter campaign as well during the period. And then we used our email base now. The affiliate email base actually helped us to get to over 10 million customers. Obviously our email base isn't as large as that, um, but we, um, we obviously we got the ability to utilise that affiliate relationship and drive it to more customers. So this shows they would have received the email in their inbox, and again they would have gone through the sign-up process um, and then got the email into their, uh, into their inbox. And as you can see, each of these um, emails has got a unique barcode on it, and at the bottom, a unique code for use online as well. And this is the one that went out in print. So um, we went to four million uh, people through print using, um, using the Sun, the Mirror, Daily Mail, and the Daily Express. And then the results of the campaign. So we got a really high volume of distribution through affiliates. In actual fact, it was higher than any of the other channels that we worked with. Affiliates drove 43% of total sales during the campaign. That's across the whole campaign, in-store and on online. That then splits down to 57% in-store, which I think is a staggering stat when you're thinking about you're actually using online to drive offline, um, and then 43% of that online. And 70% of the new customers from the campaign were actually acquired through affiliates, proving that this is a, a great channel for us to be 
um, working with to build our, our base of customers. Um, additionally, um, on top of that, I just wanted to point out the return on investment. So affiliates drove any, a return on investment four times the, um, the rate of offline um, traditional spend. So we've proved to the rest of the company now that you can subsidise um, the cost of traditional spend using online. And off the back of this, we've run a successful um, repeat campaign utilising the results that we had and we've run with just the top three affiliates that drove um, the most volume for us. So we utilise that and we're working on another one now. And then next steps for Debenhams. Um, we are going to be working on a mobile site to launch later this year and additionally we're working on launching internationally starting with Germany later this year. And I'll hand over Greg to Greg now for more information on Badger Cloud. Thank you. Okay, so I'd like to talk to you about Voucher Cloud. Um, Voucher Cloud was a mobile app that was launched in February last year, which was um, basically we started with a print business, um, doing printable vouchers, and we wanted to work out how we could create a consumer app and a merchant proposition to give control to merchants to run voucher campaigns on mobile and online, but also to allow consumers to redeem mobile vouchers when they're out and about. So what I want to talk to you about is some stats and voucher cards to demonstrate how um, consumers and publishers are adopting apps, um, how we've fared in our first 15 months. Um, I want to talk to you um, about some of the brands that we've worked with, some of the successes, and also why we should all be looking at vouchers. So in 15 uh, months since we launched, we've had one and a half million UK downloads. That stretched across um, Android and iPhone, and we're now seeing 70,000 new members joining every month. We've had two and a half million vouchers downloaded since launch, and we've had 1.4 million vouchers redeemed. Um, what's interesting here is that our expectation was to actually have 100,000 in our first year, so we fast passed it. Um, what we also have seen is how Android has obviously taken over. Um, in, in the UK alone, um, we, we, sorry. Um, in the UK alone, we've now seen that our Android downloads on a daily basis have now are past our iPhone. So to give some examples of the, um, of the credibility we've had, we have voted as the top lifestyle app by Apple last year. The Sunday Times have voted as the number one consumer app. Carphone Warehouse voted us as the best, as one of, sorry, the nominee of one of the best lifestyle apps. And we've had coverage in the BBC Daily Mail, Guardian, Sun Metro, and lovely people of NMA, so there should be no retail who isn't immediately considering how Voucher Cloud can transform your business. People are raving about it. So who do we work with? We've worked, we work with national brands and we work with local brands. Now, from a local perspective, um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to allow businesses to be able to control how campaigns work. Because when you put a voucher into, onto the internet, you have absolutely no control. So we wanted to allow people to be able to say, right, how many vouchers do you want to be redeemed? How many do you want to be downloaded? As Jill mentioned, how many do you want per person? And also we wanted to be able to give control over what branches you had. We have a self-serve platform that enables any business to come along and create a platform and then run their own campaigns. For the national brands, we have an account management team. And we work, we've worked with the likes of Debenhams, Fitness First, Odeon, Pizza Hut, Hotel Chocolat, McDonald's. So a nice range of different sectors. We have 2,500 uh, merchant relations. We stretch across uh, 20,000 outlets and we have 10,000 offers on the system. Every day we're getting about 25 new local merchants coming to us. So how's it actually worked for us? Um, Show here some case studies, and I think the interesting thing to look at is the redemption rates. If we look, for example, at our retail example, um, we ran a campaign for two weeks. The voucher actually saw 47,500 uh, views. It was downloaded by 15,000 people. What this meant was that people could use it offline. So if there are certain shopping centres, for example, you have no signal, we needed to kind of combat this thing, and so we introduced the ability to have offline redemption. Of 15,000 that actually downloaded the voucher, 7,000 people redeemed us, so nearly a 50% redemption rate, whereas in print you see sometimes 3, 6, 8% redemption rates. What's nice about voucher card is it stretches across many different sectors, so we work with restaurants, we work with retail, days out, leisure and entertainment, so it works for every sort of business. So why should people be using mobile vouchers? I think the main thing is that it gives control. You know, people are out and about, they're looking to go shopping. Now we're in a climate whereby people are looking to save. 
number of times I myself have been out and about and I've been wanting to go to a restaurant, or wanting to go shopping, I knew there was a principal voucher and I know, I know I've not had one. Bringing in mobile vouchers means that you can, brands and people can not only redeem vouchers but they can attract people who are in their close vicinity. We have the ability to drive traffic at stores for brands which aren't so busy. So we've worked with one cinema chain who in central London are exceedingly busy, but in Manchester they weren't very busy. So they drove a high, high value voucher in Manchester, whereas a low value voucher in London. The ability to track your campaign, to see where uh, vouchers are redeemed, where they're downloaded, to see the demographic of the people that are using your vouchers, and most importantly, there's no more paper vouchers to count. We spoke to a retailer who was spending close to a quarter of a million pounds on counting vouchers every year using a voucher cloud system, having it all digital, completely remove this. Obviously highly cost effective, unlike traditional media, this isn't just a platform that you have to use for one day, so if you pay for an advert in a newspaper, it's there for a day and then it's gone. With voucher cloud and with mobile vouchers, you can have visibility on the app in the consumer's pocket, not one day, not a week, but for a month, and you can also obviously um, have this done at a fraction of the cost. How we work is that we look at um, charging people only on results and obviously working with the likes of the affiliate window, um, we can um, obviously drive campaigns based on performance. And as I mentioned, there's obviously complete flexibility and control here. You can choose when you start a campaign, what you want to offer, who you want to even offer it to, and obviously how many offers you want to promote. As for the future, I think one thing that with mobile vouchers and mobile in particular that's become kind of huge now is NFC. I'm sure you all saw the announcement by Google and obviously the announcement by all the UK networks. Being able to take payments and mobile vouchers is going to be very, very powerful and I strongly suggest that all brands start looking at how they can use NFC um, in the future. today is that there's a huge opportunity when it comes to looking at particularly mobile and also other ways of serving um, to people who aren't just, just looking online. Um, we've shown you um, some stats around mobile usage and we've had a look at some really strong examples from both Debenhams and Batchcraft. So um, now I'd like to invite any questions from the audience. Yes, appreciate it. Hi there. Um, I just wanted to a question to Vouch Cloud. Um, how are you faring with the likes of uh, Groupon and uh, Living Social, which are obviously two dominant sort of uh, discount online facilities? And uh, yeah, just by just to see how where you fit. <laughs> I think that's a question I get asked every single day. Um, I think for us, there's there's two very different things. Obviously, Groupon is about it's about the transactional revenues we buy a customer will obviously pay for something. They'll then go in and they'll use a voucher, um, and it's only one one offer per day per city. What Voucher Cloud is trying to do is we're trying to aggregate as many offers as possible within the system. We're trying to give um, the customers choice, and we're trying to obviously give the merchants control. I'm sure everyone's read in the press the issues that, that a lot of businesses have been ha are having with the likes of Groupon and Living Social. Um, whereas um, for us, although we're actually about to launch a transactional uh, revenue platform called Deal Cloud, um, we feel that the voucher um, opportunity is very different to the daily deal opportunity. Any more? Okay, well, oh. I just wondered to what extent you can target the customers that actually view the map in the first place if you're working in you know, a specific sector. Okay, um, so we, the information that we know about our users, um, we know where they live, um, we know their age, we know their sex, we know what they've looked at, what they've redeemed, what they've downloaded. So we've uh, run campaigns which have included um, uh, push advertising to customers, we've run um, push notifications, um, but obviously mainly it's that we can target uh, by sex, by interest, uh, by age and by location. Hi, uh, this is a question for the lady that gave you on Dublin's case study. I think this is right, but I was walking past the um, Debenhams in Central Bristol. I'm pretty sure I saw one of the in-store POS's QR code. Yep. Um, 
But it was part of that particular case study or something different. Um, let us know how the QR codes are working for you guys. Um, I don't have the stats to hand to be able to tell you how well the QR codes are working currently, but um, it's something that we've been utilising through the iPhone app um, with the scanner that we've got in there. So we utilise it currently to um, give additional offers to our app users, um, promoting what we've done previously is um, giving a, a free coffee for anyone that downloads the app using the QR codes that we've got in the windows. Um, I can't share those stats with you, unfortunately, but um, as far as I know, the, the app's working very well so far. And um, we've launched since we've launched the iPhone um, app, we've gone onto Android, Nokia, and we've recently launched um, a Beauty Club app as well. Thanks. Okay, well, uh, if there's no more questions, then thank you very much. Everyone.